Good morning. So last week we had the story of the beheading of John the Baptist. But two weeks ago, Jesus sent the disciples out into the world to teach, to preach, to heal, and cast out demons on his behalf. And today's story, they return home, back to Jesus, and discuss all the things that they have done. Now, I imagine that they were probably pretty excited to be back among their friends, and they were hugging each other, maybe sharing stories about their successes or failures. Maybe they were trying to one-up each other. Like, I converted 11 people. Well, I converted 13 people. Now, in the midst of this, Jesus says, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Because they had been so busy that they didn't even have time to eat, let alone take a break. But as they arrived at the deserted place, it wasn't deserted at all. The needy people had heard that they were back and beat them there. So it seems that they won't get to rest because Jesus would never turn anyone away. Now the disciples were hoping and looking forward to some quiet time alone with Jesus. And Jesus invited them to go rest with him, to decompress after a long journey. And that was their plan. But of course, we all know what happens to your best laid plans. Now, I would be kind of annoyed if I was one of the disciples and the crowd was following me around. Because they and we, now, we long to meet God in solitude and quiet. But often, you know, life gets in the way. And this can be tiring, which is why the disciples went to go rest. I mean, we even have a commandment that tells us to rest. It's the Ten Commandments, of course, not the Nine Commandments. Keep the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Now, Sabbath isn't Sunday. Sunday is the Lord's day. Sabbath is a different day. Now, this commandment goes back to when Moses had just freed the Jewish people from Egypt. We all know this, from slavery. And it was a day they actually got to rest. They're actually ordered to rest. And this was a new idea for them because they were slaves. So they rejoiced in it and praised God. And in modern times, the Sabbath is usually only observed by devout Jewish people. Begins Friday at sundown, lasts to sundown Saturday. No work, no phone, no internet. A full day of rest, of study, prayer, and time with your family. Now how wonderful does that sound? When did we lose the idea of having Sabbath. When I have a day off, and my day off is Monday, just so you all know, Monday's day off, I usually spend the whole day cleaning the house or grocery shopping, going to the doctor, etc., etc. I check my email very often on my phone, and I can get email on my phone, which is quite annoying actually, but hey, technology. So it's not very restful, is it? We aren't slaves anymore, but we kind of have enslaved ourselves in our culture. We live in this culture of busyness. We have to be busy all the time. I'm so busy. We wear our busy like a badge of honor. And a lot of times we work hard seven days a week to buy things that we don't actually have time to use because we're too busy. We must always be moving and going and going. We rarely stop to consider God's presence in our lives and how God blesses us. So this is why resting is so important. I came across a term a few years back called compassion fatigue. Now this is something that happens to people who care for other people. When people are caring for others and they don't leave any time for themselves, not even to eat maybe, they can become depressed or angry or apathetic about life, kind of like the disciples. They want to take a break. They want to relax, but needy people follow them everywhere because there is no end to human need. 
Sometimes we call this today burnout. I'm so burnt out. Jesus, however, always continues on teaching and healing. He doesn't have to rest. It's implied in the text that Jesus attends to the crowd by himself. So maybe he let the apostles go take a break while he confronted the masses. Now we are all empowered, like the disciples, to live out Jesus' ministry in our lives, but unlike Jesus, we do need rest. And Jesus offers us a break. He says that the work of God on earth is not dependent on us alone. We are never alone. We have each other, and we also have him, Jesus. He's the one who has compassion for us, and he continues the work even when we can't. Because we do need to rest physically, of course, but also mentally. Can we really take a step back, take a breather, stop our brains from worrying about all the things that we have to get done? I know that's a hard one for me. And Jesus, as the good shepherd, takes compassion on the crowds because they are like sheep with no shepherd. And he invites us to come rest. Like in Psalm 23, which we all know, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes us lie down. He doesn't suggest that we lie down. He makes us lie down. He leads me beside the still water. He revives my soul, guides me along right pathways. This speaks of how lying down with God, resting with God, praying, revives us and can help us to continue to do God's work in the world with a renewed sense of purpose and joy, always with joy. So today, I invite everybody to do some homework. No, just kidding. Think about life, modern life. What occupies your time most? Are you always on the go? Do you make time to rest? Are you too busy to enjoy yourself? Then remember what Jesus says. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. We are to live out Christ's mission in our lives, to have compassion, to help people, to love each other. But please, always remember, you got to take a vacation sometimes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.